All right, let's talk about how we can do state space analysis using Scilab. First, if you want to define a system using the state matrix A, the input matrix B, the output matrix C, and the transmission matrix D, then you have to do this. First, define the matrix A. Let's say this is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and say minus 6, minus 11, minus 6. Of course, this is in phase variable canonical form. So this is A, B is 0, 0, 1, this is the column matrix B, C is say 6, 0, 0, this is a row, row vector, and D is of course 0 in this one, right? So if you want to define the system using these matrices, you have to say sys, whatever variable name you want, and then you have to use the function syslin, so that stands for linear systems, and this string uh, argument C that tells uh, Scilab that it's a continuous time system and then you have to just pass in the matrices so A, B, C and D all right so that will define the system now if you want to go back and get the transfer function model from this you can do that by using the SS2TF function so let's do that so let's clear the screen and let's say the transfer function is G and by using the SS2TF function, we can actually get the transfer function uh, model from the uh, state space model. Remember that we defined the state space model as sys, SYS. All right, so let's see that. So the transfer function model was supposed to be six divided by SSQ plus six SS square plus 11S plus six. So the denominator is perfect, but uh, look at the numerator. In the numerator, we have six, but uh, there are some other terms like these. But remember, this d minus 14 is denoting that this is 10 to the power minus 14. So the coefficient of s is of the order of 10 to the power minus 14. And here also this is in the order of 10 to the power minus 14. So these are essentially numerical errors, okay, round of errors. So you can safely ignore them without any issues. All right. And let's make sure that the eigenvalue of the matrix A is identical to the roots of the characteristic polynomial here. So let's calculate the eigenvalue of the matrix A using the spec function so the spec function spec function will give me the eigenvalues and the eigenvalues are minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and by using the roots function we can actually get the roots of this polynomial so 1s cube 6s square 11s plus uh, 6 plus 6 all right so now of course if we calculate so these are the roots so it actually matches with our, what we know about state space model right so this uh, eigenvalues of A is matching with the roots of the characteristic polynomial. Now once again if you want to uh, get back from a transfer function model to a state space model you can do that as well very easily. So let's see that. So let's define a transfer function model first. So in order to do that we actually define the polynomial variable S. There are several other ways in which you can do the transfer function modeling. So watch my previous video on that. So uh, we define the polynomial variable s and then we can actually define any transfer function uh, very easily let's call this some other transfer function g2 let's say okay and uh, using the syslin function we can once again define the transfer function model so again it's a continuous time system and let's say the polynomial numerator is 6 and the denominator is s cube plus 6 s square plus 11 s plus 6 all right so that's fine so that will define the transfer function and if i want to get the state space model from this we actually have to define another variable and use the tf to ss function from this for this so let's pass in the transfer function and we get the state space model back all right so this gives us a de detail about this but if i just uh, want the abcd matrices out of this a B, C, and D out of this. Then what we are going to what we are going to do? We are going to call the A B C D function and apply it on the state space model that we just got by converting uh, the transfer function model to a state space model. So this is what we get. All right. 
remember that this is not exactly matching with the phase variable canonical form because, because this is not in phase variable canonical form so a single transfer function model has infinitely many possible uh, state variable models and this is one of them this is just one of them all right now let's discuss how we can actually calculate the time response from a state variable models right so one of the salient features of state space modeling is that we can actually calculate the time response uh, for in, uh, for uh, initial conditions as well which is not possible for transfer function models so let's do that all right let's say uh, of course our system has three possible states and let's say uh, the initial condition for the states which is defined by x0 are 1 minus 2 and say 0 all right so those are the initial conditions all right and let's choose the time uh, variable as well so we are going to use a linear space that starts from 0 and in, uh, with a step of say 0 0.01 maybe and it ends at 10 seconds all right so that's the time variable here all right so let's first calculate the step response of the system okay so let's calculate the step response of the system you are going to use the c sim function again this is continuous time simulation and let's calculate the step response so we are going to use the string step to denote its step response okay that independent time variable and we are going to pass in the system all right so that calculates the step response so y1 is denoting the step response here now let's calculate the response to the initial condition only all right so the csim function allows us to do that but note that we have to pass in the input as well in this one but since for initial conditions only the input is supposed to be zero what we can do we can actually pass in an array that has the same length as the time array but has all zero values in it the easiest way of achieving that is just uh, writing uh, a zero multiplied by t so that actually creates an array that has same number of elements as the time array but has uh, all zeros filled in all right and then of course we have to pass in uh, the time variable as usual and then the system and of course then we have to pass in the initial conditions so that will give you the response to the initial condition so this is the response y2 is the response to this initial conditions only and of course if i want to calculate uh, both of them together you can actually pass in whatever input uh, you desired here at the same time as the uh, in initial conditions or you can just uh, calculate them individually and uh, add them like that like this all right so y3 is denoting the step response of the system while having these initial conditions all right so let's plot, plot all of these results so t versus y1 t versus y2 and t versus y3 all right and if i just plot them yeah here are the results so this is the first one this is the second one and this is the third one all right of course you can put legends and clear up the figure of course okay we are not going to uh, talk about how we can actually uh, maximize our efficiency of plotting and do nice plots here all right so and that's about it about the transient response for state space models all right so let's let's talk about the controllability and observability of uh, systems here so let's clear the screen here so of course controllability uh, complete state controllability can be calculated uh, using the kalman's controllability matrix and let's call this matrix mo and that's can be calculated by using this function ctrb mat that's controllability uh, so, sorry that be, that is going to be so the controllability can be calculated very easily using the controllability matrix function and uh, let's call the controllability matrix to be m0 and this is going to be cont mat all right and you have to pass in the system matrix and the input matrix all right so that gives you the controllability matrix here for this system all right and of course you can just calculate the rank of a so rank of the controllability matrix to figure out uh, whether the system is completely state controllable or not here we see the rank of the controllability matrix matches up with the rank of the system uh, system matrix so essentially it's the number of uh, state vari uh, state variables here or the order of the system whatever you want to call it so the system is completely state controllable here in this one similarly you can actually calculate the observability matrix similarly so using the obsv mat function and now you have to pass in the in system matrix as well as, as the output matrix 
so using that so that's the um, observability matrix of course it's a diagonal matrix with non-zero diagonal elements so it has to be uh, uh, be rank zero but let's check that anyway so we can actually check the rank of the observability matrix so the system is completely observable all right so that's about it now the one last thing we can actually since the system is completely state controllable we can actually do arbitrary pole placement so that's the necessary and sufficient condition for arbitrary pole placement so let's see that maybe all right so let's say i want to uh, so let's once again uh, recall that uh, the original system the poles of the original systems or the eigenvalue of the original systems system was at minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 right so these were the pole locations essentially right maybe i want to place the poles at a different location maybe i want to place the poles at maybe at minus 5 so that's one real pole and maybe two complex conjugate pairs maybe one at minus three plus two uh, j maybe okay so this is how we write j that's percentage i okay so minus three plus two uh, j and minus three minus two j maybe these are the pole locations i desire right so of course using the linear state variable feedback methodology we can actually place the poles of the closed loop system like this since the system is completely state controllable so the linear uh, state variable feedback gain k can be calculated using the p pole function so that stands for pole uh, place poles essentially we have to pass in the state uh, system matrix as well as the input matrix and the desired location for the poles and this is now giving me the corresponding gains for the state variable feedback matrix and we can verify the fact that it actually has placed the poles uh, at proper places by calculating the eigenvalues for the modified state matrix for the system that will be a times a, a minus b times k and indeed uh, we have placed the poles at minus 5 minus 3 plus 2j minus 3 minus 2j so that will be the end of this discussion thank you very much for watching